As the mourners at a candlelight vigil tonight remember the dead at Fort Hood, the question remains why. 13 dead, among them a pregnant woman, 34 wounded, and a lone gunman who reportedly told his cousin, I was born and raised here, I'm going to do my duty and serve my country. That is not what happened yesterday. Army Major Nidal Hassan, trained by the military to be a psychiatrist, allegedly stood up in a crowded room, shouted Allah Akbar, God is great in Arabic, and opened fire. John Quinones is live at Fort Hood outside Killeen, Texas tonight. John. Elizabeth, I'm here at Three Corps headquarters, very close to the processing center where yesterday's massacre took place. Today, 2020 was given exclusive access to secure areas of this sprawling base where we visited some of the wounded and their families. We pieced together a timeline of what really happened and discovered some amazing stories of luck, survival, and heroism. Peggy McCarty has an appointment with a miracle. We're driving with her across the vast expanse of Fort Hood, where she's going to see her daughter, Kira, a survivor of yesterday's attack here. How do you feel, Peggy? I'm very nervous. Past the prairies, past soldiers returning to their duties after the blackest day imaginable yesterday. I just want to see her, and I know that she's going through so much. It takes us some time to find out where we're going, but we finally locate Kira's barracks and wait outside. Peggy is waiting with Joe Torkelson, Kira's new husband. Just six weeks ago, they were all together at their wedding. Now it's another kind of joy. A bullet grazed Kira in the head. And she was also shot in the back. And she's convinced, were it not for what she was wearing around her neck yesterday, she would be dead. Uh, my grandma gave me this necklace um, on Halloween. It's a guardian angel necklace. She gave you this, your grandmother, before you left? Yes. <laughs> and you think this might have done something? I think so. How would you describe your wife? Beautiful, amazing. <laughs> and tough, you say? Tough, yeah. The family is thrilled, but like so many others tonight, the Bonos are struggling to come to terms with what exactly happened here. This was an American soldier. Just stood up, apparently, stood up and just started opening fire for, for what reason, you know, because he didn't want to go? Well, a lot of people don't want to do a lot of things, but it's something, it's part of life, you know. Why would you turn on your fellow soldiers like that when you're supposed to be there to protect them? and? You know, sorry. Tonight, doctors say she will be fine, but the family knows it could have been so much worse. The other soldiers that are in her unit that were not as fortunate as Kira, you know, our hearts go out to them. Tonight, they're hearing from Kira a gripping first-hand version of what took place. How would you describe what you've been through? It was something I've never been through before. It's the craziest thing I've ever had to experience, so. At about 1 p.m., Major Nidal Malik Hassan arrives at this readiness center and sits down amongst 40 to 50 people waiting here. And the mayor stood up and he said, Allah Akma, or something of that sort. And he started firing and. At around 1.20, for several minutes, chaos. Armed SWAT teams run to the scene. Ambulances are dispatched. Sirens blare. Inside, Kira is in the midst of terror. How long did it continue, the shooting? It seemed like it would never end. It seemed like he was just firing over and over again. I really couldn't see his face because the flash of his muzzle, I could see the flash from his weapon. And I th I'm sure one of the first couple shots he fired off is what grazed the top of my head. If Kira was an inch taller, she'd likely be dead now. She runs for her life, not even aware that Hassan has shot her in the back. What is going through your head? What I was thinking about, for the truth, was my husband. So, and uh, I really thought that that was the end. Amazingly, a friend of hers is able to actually pull the bullet from her body. And even more amazing is what happens next. She jumps in the ambulance and tries to drive it. Yes. 
We drove about 20, 25 feet, and I hear, I hear her say, where do I go? And I looked in there, and I was like, Specialist James, what are you doing? And she then, was driving the ambulance? <laughs> so wow. one of the EMTs had to get out and switch places with her. 1.23 p.m., 911 calls are coming in. Kimberly Munley, a civilian police officer and mother of a three-year-old and a 14-year-old, is directing traffic elsewhere on the base. She responds. It's now around 1.27 p.m. Uh, she fired on him twice and drew the attention toward her. He immediately spun around and charged her. Uh, she fired a couple more rounds, fell to her back, continued to fire. Today, this woman, five foot two, is being hailed as a giant hero. She is a, a shorter person. She she packs a lot of a lot of a power behind that. Kim definitely acted courageous. She is she is a fine example of, of a, a law enforcement officer. In all the confusion, Hassan is at first reported to have been killed, but in fact he's alive and unconscious. 2 p.m. The military declares the situation under control. Hassan is transported to the very same hospital where many of his victims are already arriving. Tonight, Hassan is reported to be paralyzed and on a ventilator. I hope he heals up so he can explain why he did it. I mean, I don't know if he ever will. I mean, it would give a lot of people a you know, sense of direction on what, what, what went down. By the time Kira and her family meet today, you'd hardly know anything was wrong with her. It is truly incredible. What do you hope happens to him if he survives? I don't really know. That's, um, I know that he'll have his own judgment, you know, and no matter what God he believes in, I know he'll have his own judgment. And I can't, I can't judge him. Hope he gets what he deserves. <laughs> How many of the dead did you know? Quite a few. And it was a tough day today. It was, it was a very emotional day. Tough day. Kira also told me that seeing how her fellow soldiers performed under fire gives her all the confidence in the world that she'll be well protected when she gets to Iraq. We'll also learn tonight that a memorial service for the victims is planned for next week. Elizabeth. All right, John, thanks so much.